What's going on, everybody? Welcome to G Myers World. And what we're going to be talking about now is the must have rookie premiere. Now, like I like to do in most of my videos, when a new promo is out and I know that it's going to be general questions, a lot of you guys just watch like the beginning of the video and then you skip out once, you know, what you're trying to figure out if it's not in the video. Let me just go over it again. If you buy a rookie premiere player off the auction house, it does not transfer to Madden 19. You have to complete the set in order for the card, for you to get the low overall version of the card in Madden 19. So if you only turned on to, you know, tuned to this video to find out information like that, you got it. You can either leave or you can stay and join a wonderful world of G Myers world, all right? It's your option, all right? But I guarantee if you stay and listen to some of the things that I have to say, it's going to make you a better Madden 19 player. Okay, now, the highest rookie premiere value out of everyone that is available right now it has to be Barkley. It has to be Saquon Barkley. If you look at every other team, and look, this is what I'm saying. Every team that, that has one of these players right now, like the 10 that EA has given us, there is no other card that is guaranteed to get more work and more emphasis is going to be on him at the start than Saquon Barkley. Like he's, this dude is starting day one. He's starting day one. He's going to be in the preseason. He's going to be putting in work. So there's a high chance, bro, that he's going to get an upgrade earlier than any other card that's on this list. So let me explain to you again, because I, I went over it in a previous video. When you look at Team of the Week, right, and you go over here and you see, um, you see exactly what's going on with um, the cards as they get upgraded. Like you got one for every week, right? When you look at the preseason, there's a high chance, bro, that this guy might be one of the cards that go into the set, if not the card that makes the set. Like the way Derek Carr was. What I will say is this. Usually EA won't throw a rookie that high up, you know what I'm saying, to make them that card. But when I look at Saquon Barkley's game, and I look at the Giants right now, and I see OBJ coming back, um, there's a lot of questions about Eli. They stopped his consecutive starts. Um, they got rid of a lot of their offensive pieces. They need to run the ball. They need to generate something to give Eli Manning a chance to sit back in the pocket and throw a pick. Because he's going to throw picks, bro. Listen, let me tell you something, Giant fans. He's going to throw some picks, bro. And you're going to like it. Because you're a Giant fan and you're going to ignore the fact that he's throwing maximum amounts of picks. And you're going to blame the O-line. Because that's what Giant fans do. But that's neither here nor there. Saquon Barkley has a very, very high chance. The same way Mitchell Trubisky got one this week. To be able to get something that's upgradable. Now remember, he starts at a 79 overall, I believe. We're going to go back and go check it really quickly. But he starts at a 79 overall. So let me explain to you what that means. Once he starts getting upgraded, his next card will probably be like an 82, 83. So that puts him in elite status. So now what you've got, okay, he starts at a 79 overall. You can see it in the bottom right. Now what you got is a card that's an elite that you didn't pay for at the start of Madden 19 when most of the cards are going to be going for decent value as, you know, the elite values, whatever they're going to be at that time, it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Like the lower elites because they made elite start at 80 overall starting in Madden 18, which is this year. Before that, um, you know, the elites, I believe, started at 90s or something. Wasn't it? Weren't the goals like 80s? I don't remember what's going on, but it doesn't really matter, bro. The bottom line is this, right? He is going to be the most valuable because he's going to go out there and I do believe, like when I tell you that certain players are going to be decent, if you look at the rookie premieres that I picked from last year, uh, Madden 17 going into 18, you can let me know. What do you think about the choices that I made right here? You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm telling you stuff like, oh, yeah, bro, I don't know what I'm talking about. And No, I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I can prove it. I don't just say things like, yeah, bro, this is this. No, I show you. These are the guys that I got from Madden 17 going into 18, right? Look at what they came up to be. Now, as they upgraded... They did wonders, except for this guy, but he got hurt. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, Corey Davis got hurt. So it's not a situation where, you know, it's like, um, yeah, I acquired him 822 when I got the game. Okay, so look, it's not like, okay, bro, yo, I got all four, but I got three out of four. And Corey Davis, he was geared up to be a decent piece for the Titans, but you can't, you, you can't predict injury. So he got hurt. Everybody else that didn't. Remember, Leonard Floyd got a 99 overall, but it missed the cutoff. Because what happens is these cards upgrade until February or something like that. When is the I think it's like February. But no, but this guy, he got one for the Super Bowl. Like, I mean, for the playoffs, and they didn't give it to us. I don't know what EA is doing. But they said that they should be, we should be getting the actual upgrades up until February. So if he gets a 99 card before then, we should be able to get it. But, but Leonard Fournette got a 99, but then they said it was a cutoff. So we didn't get the 99 overall. So Fournette was probably the ultimate thing. But I knew the Jaguars with Blake Bortles, what were they going to do? They're going to run the ball. 
Blake Bortles is not like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Drew Brees. So they're going to need somebody. They need the run game. See, when you're a great quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, you don't really need the run game. It helps you to take some pressure off, but you don't need a run game. Very few quarterbacks you can say that about. It's very, very few. Most of the quarterbacks in the league, they need a run game. But the quarterbacks I just named, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, you know what I'm saying, Drew Brees, they will pinpoint dot you all the way up the field when you know that they're passing. But that's not something that was regular. So I knew Leonard Fournette was going to get gains, bro, because Blake Bortles is the quarterback. Miles Garrett, he's a Brown, okay? All right? Understand that. He's a Brown. So what does that mean when you get drafted to the Browns and you're in the first round? You're going out there to play. So even if you don't play well, whatever like that, EA is going to give them updates. They're going to they're gonna get upgrades, bro. That's what I'm saying. Denzel Ward is a possibility. But his value at corner doesn't translate to what Saquon Barkley is going to be with all the new additions to the run game. The one cut, the this cut, all kinds of cut. Move the pile, do your moms. Like There's a lot of things that um, with the traits that they're going to have that it's going to be more influential and give him those upgrades for Saquon Barkley. And that's what I'm trying to make sure that you guys understand. You have to make sure that whatever you're investing your timing, your time in, is going to give you something back. Okay, and Saquon Barkley, in my opinion, is going to do that. Now, Marshawn Lattimore is just an outright GOAT. Do I need to talk about what this guy was doing? Bro, the dude caught a pick with his butt cheeks. I, I think this was the guy, right? Didn't he do the butt pick? I think this guy did a butt pick. This guy was very, very good. Going one-on-one with Julio Jones, you know, Julio Jones did get some gains, but he made it very, very difficult for Julio. This guy's going to be a star in the league, okay? And these are the picks that I made. So I, I understand a little bit about value. Okay, so now that you guys have seen that and you understand my insight into it, this year going into it, you have to get, bruh, he's going to the Giants. The quarterback is Eli Manning. He's going to run the ball a lot. He's going to possibly get a lot of upgrades. Okay, after him, offensively, I wouldn't go Sam Darnold. Uh, Hurst, I don't know about that. You know, this old lineman maybe, um, hmm, everybody else is defensive going down there. I guess I got to go Calvin Ridley. I got to go Calvin Ridley simply because he's playing alongside Julio Jones. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're playing alongside Julio Jones, man, you better do something, dog. Like, you got the speed. I, look, I don't like in Madden because he's 6'1". The cutoff for me is like 6'3". Like, that's why I usually went, like, Demarius Thomas was cheap at the beginning of uh, 18. I got Demarius Thomas to just start. 6'3 is usually my cutoff. You know, Julio Jones height, stuff like that. Um... Depending on how he goes up for the ball, how they emphasize aggressive catching, it may work out for us, okay? It's a possibility that it may work out for us if we do get him as one of them, but offensively, I would put him before Sam Donald, okay? I would, and, and like I said, I'm explaining it like this so that you guys understand. It's the higher chance. It's like when you go fantasy, uh, fantasy football and you draft a sleeper pick. That's what you're pretty much doing. You're going to get a sleeper pick here offensively, Calvin Ridley is probably going to get some big games because of Julio. So if he can beat the one-on-one -on -one coverage just by going over the top, I think Matt Ryan should be able to get him the ball. If he doesn't, they should cut Matt Ryan. Like, bro, listen, at some point, we have to understand that if quarterbacks are not doing the job, bro, and he's getting all his guaranteed money, Matt Ryan's going to have to – he's not my guy. So you guys might be like, yo, bro, you, you hating on the Hawks. I'm not hating on anyone. I'm just telling you, bro, if you can't win, win a Super Bowl and you're up 28-3 to – I don't know what to tell you, man. And I know, yo, that one block and the fumble and all that kind of stuff, bro. I know all that stuff, bro. The dude didn't block for him and Matt Ryan got blindsided. That's great. All right, that's all excellent. You're still up 28 to 3. I don't care what's going on. You got to win that game. He didn't. That's going to be on his resume forever. Is he still a decent quarterback? Yes. Is he a guy that I would ever put on my team? No. In Matt Ryan. But can he make these throws? He should be able to. Okay. Uh, last year, I saw a lot of times where he couldn't get the ball out deep enough to Julio. Like when Julio got the step right away, dude pressed, gave him the one-two inside move, whoop, out. And he threw it, you know, you know, 50, 60 yards. It was always underthrown. Julio Jones had to come back and get it. So I, I questioned Matt Ryan's arm strength as well. And with a speedster like Calvin Ridley, I'm not, it's very, very difficult for me to guarantee that he's going to do something, but I would give him a shot because the one-year overlap, with the um, Atlanta Falcons after getting eliminated from the Super Bowl, I think they, they have enough now with Dan Quinn to be able to say, you know what, Let, let's, put, let's completely put it behind us. We went through another year. We were decent, whatever. Let's go forward now. I think that they can probably do that and be able to get some, you know, get back on track. 
But I do believe that the offensive coordinator, you know, obviously going to the 49ers and being the head coach there, that affects Matt Ryan. But that's neither here nor there. But this guy should be able to put in some work just based on who's on the other side of him. Okay? After that, I got to go this guy. Well, the O-lineman, you know, O-lineman is going to be O-lineman early on in the year. So, you know, Quentin Nelson, depending on how they do it, he has lead the way cam, but these cams don't transfer anyway. It's just going to be the base card. I would probably go Sam Darnold. So I would go Saquon Barkley, Ridley, and then Darnold over these two. You know what I'm saying? Just to, um, you know, to start the year based on what I think. Now, will Quentin Nelson probably get upgrades? It depends. It really depends, man. Because the Colts have been, I, I don't know, they've been very disappointing over the last couple of years. So I don't know if he, if one dude being added in the O-line is going to really change it. I, don't, I haven't really taken a look at all the, um, the other trades or whatever they've done. But if he's able to stand out, it'll probably be a good upgrade. But I don't think that he's going to be something that you're going to be looking forward to to get upgraded as the year goes on. But I do think that he will be a good addition to the team, depending on how he's utilized and, and you know, in the scheme that they're running. Hayden Hurst, he'll be good for upgrades as far as run block. Okay, so if you're looking for a tight end that you don't want to pay for, maybe you get him. But the top three, I got to go Saquon Barkley, then I'm going to go Calvin Ridley, then I'm going to go Sam Darnold. Let me know what your top three offensive rookie premier players are and if what I said made any sense at all. And if I did make any sense to you, go ahead and splash that subscribe button and join the G-Miles World fam. I'm going to see you guys later, man. Enjoy your day. One love.